Hey everyone, welcome to Contra Thoughts episode 10. Another Canadian pastor arrested. Up next. <laughs> All right, another Canadian pastor arrested. This is Arthur Pulowski. You know, this happened like last week, right? So it's just old news. Uh, but, you know, I kind of like to wait a little bit because I'm lazy or something. I don't know. I'm just slow, I guess. But Arthur Pulowski and David Pulowski, his brother, were both arrested last week after service uh, for in-person gathering, organizing, quote-unquote, an illegal in-person gathering. Now, is this persecution? Is this not persecution? Should just some people might say, well, you know, it's just the law of the land. You just got to obey it. Romans 13, right? Romans 13, carte blanche, do whatever the law says, right? Well, yes and no. We also have to push against the fact that we're also called to gather together. We're also called to uh, take communion and fellowship and proclaim the word and um, we're built for community. We're people, individual people. Now, this isn't March or April of 2020. We're in May of 2021. We're looking at the government malfeasance of 14 months of lies and deception from the right and the left, blue and red states. And most of this has just been nothing but corruption. Now, there was some principles that should have been taken place. And, you know, it made sense to hold off for a few weeks and uh, take some precautions. But Masks, no masks, two masks, vaccine with a mask, no vaccine. I mean, it's it's just if you listen to the standard narrative, it literally doesn't make any sense. It contradicts itself, and that's the standard narrative. And, of course, they're not really telling us most of the truth. Anyway, the point is that this is persecution. So Christians, this is persecution. Newsflash, this is persecution. No one ever says, hey, I'm persecuting you. The early church in Rome, they weren't ever told, hey, uh, by the way, uh, we're persecuting you. They were getting them on atheism because they were not respecting the Roman gods. The Chinese church is persecuted because, you know, they're, regi they're in non-registered churches. Therefore, they're persecuted. The church in North Korea, uh, which is almost non-existent, is uh, persecuted because, you know, they're not worshiping uh, Kim Jong-un. That's that's <clears throat> they're never going to say we're persecuting you. So this is persecution. The law is the law. Yes. But we're also called as the church to meet together to proclaim the gospel and so on and so forth why is it i ask that abortion mills and pot shops and strip clubs especially in places like california have been legal and fine for months and months and months and yet it's still illegal for a church of however many people to gather further furthermore you think well dude you're just you're a slippery slope you're exaggerating richard come on that's a little ridiculous okay fine what about 73,000-plus people watching a boxing match between Alvarez and Saunders there in Dallas? 73,000 people. Are you kidding me? 73,000? Like, you're seriously kidding me right now? Indoor, since the pandemic started. 73,000 people. Now, there's no church. <laughs> Not even Joel Osteen's church. That's 73,000 people. So certainly, this church in Calgary is far less than that, even if it's 1,000 which is probably not. But even if it is, that's a fraction. It's not about health, people. It's not. This is persecution. That's what they're doing. You think, well, maybe, maybe it's not as bad as in Texas as it is in Calgary. Well, Canada has a little bit more people than Texas. Canada, <laughs> the whole country, not the state, because it's a country, right? Texas has almost 30 million, 29 million. In Calgary, excuse me, Canada has 37.5. Ah, see, there's more people in Canada than Texas, man. Duh. Well, Calgary, where the church is, and Dallas are about the same. Calgary is 1.39, and Dallas is 1.33. My point is, not only is it much more spaced out, but the point is that you have 73,000 people meeting, which I think they should, by the way, in a, for a boxing match, and then you have a church who was visited by basically the Gestapo and this pastor yelled them down about a month ago, a month and a half ago, uh, called them Nazis and so on. It was pretty great, actually. He gets arrested, which, I mean, you know, I don't want to say I had to come in. Does he have freedom of speech, freedom of religion or not? I close with this from Gary DeMar. Uh, he's an author and a pastor. 
Uh, his website is uh, American Vision. The church better wake up. For decades, pastors had been timid about preaching politics from the pulpit. The Old Testament prophets would have been stunned by the cowardice. A good many modern-day churches believe they have biblical reasons for not addressing politics from the pulpit. Many believe they are prohibited from doing so because it will jeopardize their tax-exempt status. It won't, by the way, he says. But if it did, so what? If people refuse to attend church because of a loss of tax exemption, I say good riddance, end quote. And to that I say also good riddance. If you don't want to come to church, fine, don't come to church. But we're going to meet together. We're not going to forsake the gathering together. We're not going to let a health crisis, so-called, uh, stop us from meeting and proclaiming the gospel, taking communion, and so on and so forth. I hope this has been helpful. I hope you've enjoyed this. Uh, my goal here is to ultimately... Be against the world for the sake of the world. See the craziness in the world and be against it, to push against it for the sake of the world because Jesus has overcome the world, he says. There's problems in the world, but Jesus has overcome it. So I pray this finds you well. If you uh, go ahead and like and comment, I'd really appreciate that. Uh, help me out. If you want to ring that little bell, you also see when I uh, upload content and you won't miss anything. So until next time, be against the world for the sake of the world. Take care.